Sharing the future is everyone's responsibility. Our approach to hate crime is a key part of this. We need you to help us design a service that can best serve the needs of a changing Scotland and our diverse communities. Can best serve the needs of a changing Scotland and our diverse communities. And our diverse communities. Let me conclude by saying there is no place in a modern Scottish society for prejudice. And I would urge you to contact the police if you are being targeted because of who you are. Yeah. So, last year's programme for government set out bold and ambitious plans to tackle some of the challenges of our time. Getting our economy fit for the future, preparing for demographic change and tackling inequality. It spoke to the sort of Scotland that we want to see. <laughs> One that's innovative, welcoming, caring and productive, with the aim being to see Scotland as a place for every person and community to achieve their full potential. Preparing for demographic change, eh? When did the preparation for this begin exactly? <laughs> what demographic change are they referring to? Why is there no elaboration on this demographic change? Or maybe there is, maybe I'll stand corrected. Why are they not trying to reverse this demographic trend? Or change, I should say. Why are they not trying to halt this demographic change? <laughs> Why do they spend all their time talking about the cohesive strength that diversity brings instead of trying to do something to rectify demographic fucking change? I think we all know the answer to that one. Over the past decade, we've delivered radical changes to our country. Free prescriptions, a quarter of a million modern apprenticeships, equal marriage, world-leading action on climate change. Oh, world-leading action on climate change. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh-huh. So, the defining mission of my government remains the commitment to education. <laughs> Wow. For every child to have the best start in life and to fulfil their potential, I want young people to continue to benefit from the free quality education that I was privileged to have. Ah oh, yes, that education that you were privileged to have, but yet you still thought it was a good idea to completely overhaul it and subsequently destroy it in the process. Good one. Building on the work that's underway to close the attainment gap and our colleagues in local government picking up the pace of reforms needed to put power in the hands of head teachers and communities with new packages of careers advice and student support which will also help us to continue making progress on equal access to university by 2030. Anybody that thinks that climate change is absolutely the way that the government persist, you know, proclaim that it is just take a step back and look at all of the things that they have pledged to do by 2030. If the planet could potentially burn to a crisp by 2030, why do they want to see gender equality across the board by 2030? Why do they want to make sure that everybody has equal access to university by 2030? If the world will burn to a cinder by 2030? There's a lot of things that they have planned for 2030 that would theoretically be pointless and or irrelevant if what they say about climate change was even remotely true. But hey oh, our new compassionate <laughs> So There is still work to be done to tackle prejudices and attitudes that fuel intolerance and we will consult on new hate crime laws that are fit for the 21st century Scott. Have you fucking heard yourself? We're learning more and more about the impact of our birth childhood experiences on our life chances and we have a moral imperative to do more, not only to prevent them from happening in the first place, but to limit the damages they do to people, families and communities. With the expansion of the family nurse partnership and increased recruitment of school nurses and counsellors who will help to de deliver practical support in communities to those that need it most. Continuing to take world leading action on climate change. <laughs> and Everyone who wants to be part of Scotland's progress must feel welcome to live, work and study here. As our population growth for the next 25 years is predicted to come from migration. Oh, they've got projections that show predictions for the population of the future. Now, naturally, there's many things that could be done to alter said predictions via projections and so on. But they'd rather just go with the status quo. They'd rather just rely on an open door policy. They would just rather rely on migration en masse, which is what we will inevitably see. Instead of trying to incentivize native births, or at the very least, pretend that you're trying. <laughs> and throughout all of this, throughout this constant talk about everybody being part of Scotland if they want to come and live here, and they're equally as Scottish as everybody else, no mention of 
indigenous Scots, no mention of ethnic Scots, no mention of native Scots. Everybody's equally as Scottish, apparently. Therefore, it stands to reason that the more you drum diversity-related education into the children's heads and the more you perpetuate a narrative that everybody's equally as Scottish as the next, as if it's just some fucking mindset, when we become a minority and start to fade away into nothingness, nobody will bat an eyelid because the people coming in to replace the gaps in the market will be equally as Scottish as those that were there before. Am I right? Continue to make the case that decisions in Scotland's population should be made in Scotland rather than Westminster and that powers of migration should rest with the Scottish Parliament so they can make sure that they can live up to the projections previously mentioned, am I right? Attract and keeping people in Scotland, for example, by making provisions for an advice and support service. Challenging misconceptions on immigration in Scotland and building on the success of the We Are Scotland campaign. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. I'm yet to hear them dispel or challenge any misconceptions in immigration. Oh, no, 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 no. They just get the anti-racist campaigners to waltz about schools in Scotland and insist that white people don't exist. Perhaps the most important part of serving our young people is our commitment to giving every child the best start in life. We have made progress, but it is this government's defining mission to close the attainment gap and raise the bar. <sighs> Fucking hell. This starts from day one with every new baby receiving a baby box and if we're expected to believe that there's record low birth rates in Scotland, who exactly is benefiting from the wonders of a baby box? So we are progressing our commitment to tackling ACEs and focusing our work around four key areas. Taking intergenerational approaches to supporting parents, families and children by interfering at every given notice. <laughs> Name person scheme rings a bell. Preventing and mitigating adverse childhood experiences for children and young people, including investment in school nurses and counsellors. Again, Name person scheme rings a bell. Developing an advert in trauma and for workforce. Increasing societal awareness and action across communities, including working with the hub to raise awareness and support local areas and communities. Enabling so-called resilience. Resilient to what exactly? An empowered, equal and safe fucking... <laughs> an empowered, equal and safe Scotland. The success and the well-being of our communities is rooted in the strength of our relationship and partners with local government, as well as drawing on capacities and commitment, yada yada. The stations of our communities are, are our homes, and over the lifetime of this parliament, we are investing more than 3 billion to deliver at least 50,000 affordable homes, including 35,000 for social rent. And I know who gets a good portion of those houses. I know that for a fact. You know, my mother's been on the housing list since about 1998. It's hard to believe she'd been on a list for that long and she's still never been brought up on the system and offered a house. <laughs> Diversity is something we must cherish and tackle the prejudices and attitudes that fuel intolerance. So let me get this straight. They impose diversity upon us when nobody asked for it to begin with. Then when it starts to happen, they then start to tell us it's something we must cherish. And I do find it rather strange how they insist constantly there's evidence out there supposedly that suggests that diverse societies are more cohesive and so on but yet for something that's supposedly such a great strength for us as a country there seems to be a hell of a lot being done to ensure that it continues to occur the way that they want it to but they're a hitch optimistic about the future oh yeah fuck me man we will publish our culture strategy by the end of 2018. That, that I will have to look into. Underpinned by three ambitions. Transforming through culture, empowering through culture, and sustaining culture. What the f does that even mean? International Creative Ambition Programme by May 2019. Support for the development of film and television productions, making Scotland a more attractive base for screen companies, and ensuring all children have the opportunity to enjoy cultural opportunities no matter where they live, building on the legacy of the Year of Young People. <laughs> our heritage is important, and we will continue to support our historic environment and our indigenous languages. What about the indigenous people? Do they not get a mention? Or is it just the language that you pretend to give a fuck about? Despite the challenges of Brexit, we will strive to make a positive contribution internationally and demonstrate commitment as a good global citizen. Are you effing serious with this? Global citizens 
the constant talk of global citizenship, human rights, sustainable developments. People need to start putting two and two together and realize the direction that this woman is taking this country in. But it's all under the guise of Nambi Pambi left wing rhetoric. Remove all the Nambi Pambi pish and think about it. Who do you think all of these policies in regards to childcare and early learning benefit? They're certainly not benefiting Scottish children if we're expected to believe there's stagnant birth rates, record low birth rates. <laughs> all, all of these policies in regards to human rights. Who do you think that's going to benefit in the future? Think that the human rights of the child was done in order to bring about a smacking ban? Or is it more to do with the fact if children in the future rock up on your shore on a boat, they have to be let in? And then of course, because they've got human rights, the family can rock up later on, claim asylum or just demand to come in because their child's in the country. I could go on, I could go on all day. I've spent far too much time looking at the shit our government is doing behind our box on our behalf, with our money, may I add. And if you weren't already convinced that Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP were nothing other than a puppet controlled party, then look no further than the bottom paragraph. I've embedded the UN's sustainable development goals. Of course you fucking have. There's not one policy that they have not enacted that wasn't done so at the behest of the development goal strategies. <laughs> These goals will help strengthen our ambition to improve Scotland's well-being and increase sustainable and inclusive growth. Yes, that's right. The UN, who have a clear agenda against the Western world. The UN that demand we give up all our fossil fuels. The UN that don't want us investing in nuclear industries. The UN pushing feminism. The UN pushing climate change. The UN pushing mass migration. And each and every single one of these things that they're pushing has been met with open arms from Sturgeon. All dressed up nice and pretty to appear like Nambi Pambi left wing pondering. The proverbial scapegoat, if you will.